I've zoomed in as close as I can. Um, this is basically a power distribution board out of the uh, Kenwood TS440. And you'll notice that there's a lot of discoloration on these pins. Uh, if I move this camera around, I'll probably lose the focus, but I think that you might even be able to see some pitting on these pins along with the discoloration. It's kind of a bluish color. So that implies they've gotten awfully hot. So um, there's two pins back here and these three pins here in the front and they all have the same problem. They're discolored and uh, maybe even pitted in a couple cases. So I don't think that is the source of my current trouble. This unit came to me with a whole lot of problems so you can only solve them one at a time and right now the uh, automatic antenna tuner does not work and the RF output has gone to zero it was a little flaky anyway but now it's gone to zero so it almost seems like there's a power supply issue could be a lot of things could be logic but this moves a lot of amps back here in fact I've measured peak amps of around 30 on uh, 14 volts so this is this isn't good so I wanted to show you that steady as I could I'll bring this around yeah I'll see you can't get the light on it too well uh, the solder is not that great it's not horrible there's no cracked solder joints but I'll tell you high powered uh, boards like this with big uh, big surface area um, will not stay cold if the joints are weak so I'm going to reflow everything on here and then put it back in there uh, the problem with these male pins is their female counterparts are probably darkened as well I don't know that there's much I can do about it so um, I'll try to clean these up with alcohol in fact let's see if we can do that live maybe not a <clears throat> Maybe not a, fat, a fine chance of that, but uh, let's see what we can do here. Take some acetone. Sorry, we're out of frame doing this. Okay, so here's, here's some acetone. little bit came off on the q-tip see that that might not be all bad news yeah see these are permanently discolored Huh. Uh, you know, maybe a little better. I don't know. Let me wet the other side of this one. Yeah, there's a little something coming off. Yeah, I don't want to take sandpaper to them because polished surfaces will conduct power at a lower resistance than roughed ones. So I'm just going to do my best to clean it. Yeah, that's not really coming off. I mean, a little something came off, but... Okay, let's get this one in the back. This one in the back. You'll see some orange stuff that was on there from the factory to help you Make sure you put the right, the connector on the right way, because this is all high-powered DC. So you don't want to wipe that off if you can help it. Well, all right. So that's not going to make things much better. All right, uh, we'll leave it for right now. Um, the next thing we're going to do <clears throat> is take the ESR meter and measure these caps. So the way 
I remove parts like this, here that's in the way, let's take that out of the shot. <laughs> um, hopefully these aren't glued in. Come on, focus, damn you. Thank you. Get both pins up at the same time. And generally they just pop out, but I'm doing it single handed here. These are both the same size, same value 2200. There we go. And they pop right out. No big deal. Okay, so. <clears throat> Let's see if we can make this shot work. Now we got to short these guys, clip them together. Okay, something's not tight here. usually works really well. Maybe it doesn't like being laid on its side. Hmm. That's wild because it never usually does that. Oh wait, maybe it's picking up a little noise from the camera. <laughs> Stand by please. Um, Okay, I think the camera might be interfering with this. All right, well. All right, let's put this out here so you can possibly read it. And then we attach it in any order because this is using AC. So 0.04 on our bottom scale way down here hardly in the shot says I guess it implies it's a little on the low side but less resistance is better than higher resistance okay and these I've discharged long before I pulled them out okay uh, so that doesn't strike me as a problem. Um, my meters don't have enough uh, capacitance to measure these values, 2200 microfarads. So the ESR meter is all I've got. But uh, anyway, um, that is just something I wanted to check to make sure something stupid wasn't going on. And then what we'll do is we will take and... these out of the shot. Take and suck up this uh, solder here and we will make um, these holes ready for... I don't usually do this. I usually just put them back in the hole and push and, the, and, it, and heat them and it flows all together real nice but we're gonna do it I think most people do this. Oh, see the huge ground plane is hard to heat. There we go. Okay. Stand by. Okay. Alright, let's see if that worked. <clears throat> now, um, I'm going to interrupt our soldering nirvana. No, I'm not. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put these guys back in. It looks like they got plus signs on the board. That makes it a little harder to put in, in incorrectly. Let's see. These pins may not be... Oh, that one went in. They may not be um, clean enough, but it looks like they're snapping in just fine. This is more exploratory to find out kind of what's going on. Um, it seems to me it's a power problem. It might be logic, but I'm going with what I know um, right now. Okay, so the only thing we're going to do here is we're going to change tips 
to something a lot more monstrous and shooting around a microscope and a camera is a pain in the butt. Okay, so you got to push it down tight, let it harden. Did not go all the way down. Okay, nice. All right. This one will flow a little easier. This one will flow a little easier because the pad that they go through is a lot smaller. Okay, let's build up a little bit more solder. Okay, so I'm not going to bore the daylights out of everybody like I already have, <clears throat> and I'll reflow all these, but you can see we've tested it with the ESR meter, and they're okay. There's no blown traces on here, um, and there's no severely fractured pads. There are crystalline, there is crystalline solder on here, and that's not good, but um, the only thing that bothers me is these discolored pins. It's the only thing I don't like. I don't like it. I don't know what I can do much about it. Acetone didn't take much of it off, but uh, right now, since this is clearly not the core issue, then we will just reinstall this board and get on with it. Oh, by the way, this is the reverse diode. Look at the size of that thing. That must be a lot of amps. Um, I'm going to make this a little shakier, but I think it's worth noting. <clears throat> there is the schematic of this board. Uh, it's called the TS440S Service Manual. You can get it all over the web. Um, this is this board. Now, there, there's about, I don't know, a dozen boards on the schematic called Switch Unit. It's so stupid, they all have the same name. The only thing different is the last couple of digits. The H is the only difference. The letter will change, the 14 stays the same. I'm going to start adding my own labels. This is a power distribution board, or DC distribution, and that's what I need to add to the label. It takes a while to find these things when you don't know what they're called. Um, this transformer looking guy is the choke, CH1, right there. Um, this has been pretty helpful understanding where all the power goes. It uh, comes in from the six pin connector. You got two hots coming in. One branches immediately to the finals. The other two come through that three pin connector. They join on the board. Then there's uh, um, some high frequency caps and then that giant reverse diode. <clears throat> it goes out to the front of the unit to that great big switch, the power switch. And then when you close that switch, you get power to the light bulb behind the meter and then you get power that comes, um, let's see, two of the lines get powered, I don't know where they go. Uh, one of them is for the other side of the finals, and these two go to wherever they go. But they're switched. So, <clears throat> anyway, um, that H14 is actually, I don't know if you can even see it. See it below the two pin connector? See it says H14? You see it down there? So anyway, I just want to make sure there's nothing obviously wrong and I'll refresh all this solder and uh, put it back in. <clears throat> Here's where it came from. Um, I've never split one of these open before this far so it was a little bit of a joy. Um, you'll recognize the back here with the, with the power plug uh, there's a couple screws here and um, um, a big nut that goes on the uh, phone jack and the speaker jack. Now the speaker jack didn't have anything, just a big nut and washer here to hold it on. Those two screws, you take that out and that'll allow this to separate some and then you have to disconnect this power connector from that board I just showed you and just work it out slowly. This is probably five 
five and a half inches of distance here and that really helps to get to all this stuff so you can inspect it. Um, one of the guys, his videos shows a burnt trace on this board. And, um, there is no burnt traces here. There's no burnt traces down here. I don't see any melted wire. And this is where all the high power stuff is. Now, one plant thing that's going to be tough to put back on that board I just showed you is this one here. There's so much stuff in the way to connect this to the single pin on there is going to be a real pain in the butt. But that's why we're hams or technicians or hobbyists that love tearing stuff apart. Anyway, so that's where we're at. Um, you got to chase down one problem at a time and the fact that the um, antenna tuner which is right there and the um, RF output both died at the same time in the same second they stopped and I'm not really clear that there's any fuses in this unit um, I saw some fuses on a schematic but I don't think they're internal I think this thing doesn't have internal fuses it would surprise me but I couldn't even begin to tell you where they are if it had them. Um, the other thing I did prior to this is this is all the filtering for the receiver. And I took this board out and I reflowed every single solder joint on the entire thing. And it didn't change anything. But at least I know the couple of cracked joints I found are repaired and anything that was marginal is now repaired. So if you want a radio to last as close to forever as possible you reflow it but man it's a ton of work and you know as much experience as I have soldering you still end up creating solder bridges which is code for short circuits and you have to find them and undo them before you put power to this thing so anyway and below this is the um, is the power section the RF power section and it you know visually with a bright flashlight it looks clean and nice and and uh, okay um, I think the control logic has a, has a problem something went south um, this IF board here I think is the source of this um, since I'm not finding any high powered issues in the wiring or back here at all I don't see anything wrong um, other than those those pins are discolored that bogs me. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do about it. Um, they're plated. You need to have them plated. You can't just use raw steel uh, unless you want to do maintenance on it every year, you know. So anyway, this is what we have. This is where we're at. Um, sorry to to take so long. I thought some of this stuff should be shown um, because it's hard to do if you've never done it before. And uh, getting this apart, I probably could have filmed it, but man, it's just it's just too much work. It's either get the radio done or shoot the video. So sometimes I just got to get the radio done. So this is as soon as I get this reassembled, I'll put this all back and then change my tact um, after I do some more studying on the schematics and um, and maybe a form or two. All right. I appreciate your time. Thanks. See you. Bye.